postulation. Have you have you seen this vow at some point? Always this what is BAO, right? What the baryon acoustic oscillation? So at the very beginning, in one of my first slides, I show you that baryons and photons are tightly coupled, okay? And they behave as a tightly coupled fluid. So I mean, it's all a, a, a game between pressure and gravity, okay? This is the matter over density, okay? And the time at which baryons are released from the lack of photons is known as the gravity. And you can see here in this movie, okay? So it's in the beginning of the universe, there is a sound wave that will travel until this black period, okay? And, and then photons will expand freely, okay? And then what happens with the baryons is that they are frozen here, right? At a scale given by the size of the horizon at the black period, okay? So the size of this stuff is just the sound speed in the, of the, in the, in the baryon photon fluid, uh, integrated, right, until the drag period when they decouple, when photons and, and, and baryons decouple. And this has a, a size of 150 roughly megaparsecs, okay? And this has been measured very well, uh, very, very good by with Planck, okay? So let me see, let me do it. So, yeah, okay. Probably, very, very good. So I'm going to show you here um, a movie in which. Uh, uh, in, in, in the y-axis, you can see the over density of the different components, okay? As times, uh, this is the, since the beginning of the universe, let's say when the universe was 110 years, the age I will read, probably, and, uh, <laughs> until today, okay? So you will see, right, the different uh, evolution. So you see that gas baryons, the gas and baryons and photons are tightly coupled until some point at which they decouple. And then this is the matter, of course, this is the initial uh, over density. And then the baryons cluster at a distance from the initial dark matter over density at a distance of 100, 150 megaparsecs. Okay? So there is, they, they are tightly coupled, and at some point they decouple, and they, they, the, the gravitational instability for, starts to, to grow up also here apart where the dark matter is, of course. Okay? So this means that there should be a small excess. In the two point in uh, galaxy correlation function at around 150 megaparsecs. So, we, when, we, when we measure galaxies in the sky around a given galaxy, it's around each given galaxy, there should be an excess at, a, at this distance. Okay? This is the so called baryon acoustic oscillation uh, 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 signature. So, in the 80s, what happened? That the surveys were super tiny. Right, I mean, they were of the of the of the, 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 the size of the surface were of the size of the year scale, so we couldn't measure really this over density. In in 2000, we have already the slow digital sky survey, and there are many galax many, uh, many galaxies, but the volume is small. In 2005, was the, was the first detection of the of in the, in in a larger catalog. You can see that here the catalog only reaches up to 0.2, but here we go up to 0.5. Okay. So today we have measured this baryon acoustic oscillation peak with an eight sigma um, 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 uh, significance. You can see here this, right? Sorry, no, today we have measured it with higher, uh, with higher, uh, this was with, uh, with both until 2014. I believe that now it's much larger, than, it's, it's even higher than eight sigma. And DS also measured it. You see this beautiful peak here. This is the, the sky uh, footprint of, 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 the, of uh, in galactic coordinates of this is what this is, uh, DS, sorry, what the dark energy survey has covered, okay? So, um, here you can see the impact of mass in neutrinos in terms of the baryon acoustic oscillations and in terms of the matter power spectrum. If one uses this, one can't use that, okay? Because they are the Fourier transform of each other. One cannot double count the information, okay? So, um, large scale structure measurements can be, uh, can be uh, interpreted either in the Sorry, this is interpreted, I say interpreted, either in the geometrical or in phase forms, okay? Either in the two point correlation function or the matter power spectrum, which is the Fourier transform. And we demonstrate in this, in this, in this, in this uh, paper with uh, Sunny, Magnosi, and other collaborators. So that um, when, when measuring uh, neutrino properties, bio information is better, okay? At least in the minimal and Gaussian model. The exploiting information in this way is it gives it leads to tighter limits than in this way. You can see the here, for instance, comparing 
you see a, a baseball PK and baseball ball, uh, bio. PK will be the red solid line, baseball bio will be the red dash line. So the constraint, these are the, 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 the 1D distribution probability of the neutrino mass. You can see that you, we will have tighter constraints if, you, if we use the bio information, okay? So, today, what do we know? 0.24 was the number I gave you yesterday. If we add value on acoustic oscillation, this number will go down to 0.12 dB. If we, go, if we add supernovae uh, luminosity distance, 0.11, okay? But if we add the latest information from, uh, from, from sorry, let me see. Ah, yeah, here we are. So if we have the latest information that I'm going to show you here, right? This is the, the, last, the, last, the last measurements from the Zone Digital Sky Survey. You have seen that we have measured now this beautiful peak in, in six different tracers, in Lyman Alpha, Quasar, emission like galaxy, Lumino Red Galaxy. I mean, we have a, a full catalog. Oops. I did something. Ah, no, I know what I did. There was a video, but OK, let's see. Yeah, there was a link. Yeah, there was a link there to a video, but I mean, I, I, I full screen maybe. Yeah. No, but I don't want the video, so I will go back to it. No, no because I mean, it's very nice, but I mean, they, I, will, I will send the link if you don't want to work. Okay. So okay. <laughs> Somebody, okay, very good. So let me see if I don't go. Ah, here we are, very good. So you have seen the number of traces we have. We are talking about millions, right? Here we have 700,000, 400,000, uh, uh, depending on the type of, of galaxies, luminous the galaxies, emission uh, line galaxies. So we have been able, this is what we, the, the, the sky region covered by, by the Zone Digital Sky Survey 4, right? Realize that we are almost covering the whole northern galactic cap. Okay, it's amazing, and uh, we have measured this. Right, this is in, the, in terms of the of the matter power spectrum in different resin slices. Right, and then we have also measured the so-called sigma i parameter. Okay, which gives us information about the clustering in the universe. Okay, okay. So I mean, these these measurements are incredibly accurate. And they really, really improve constraints on the neutrino mass in such a way that if we use them, we go down to the amazing number of 0 0.009 EV. Here you can see it, okay? Okay? Within the lambda CDM model. Here, this, the, here are the predictions for the normal hierarchy, for the inverted hierarchy, okay? And here we have the tightest limit today, 0 0.09 EV in the, in the lambda CDM model. Of that, yeah. That you can in no, <laughs> I, I will explain you now why. I will explain you later on why. I mean, let me come back though to exclude. Ah, okay, let, let, well, one, one second. Let me go down back. I don't know why. Yeah. But I want to go before. Ah, this limit implies, I will explain, I will explain later now why. This limit implies that. Uh, Six million neutrinos can weigh more than one electron, okay? And you will tell me, a part of your question, you will tell me, but if I change the cosmological model, this can change. Not anymore. I mean, the cosmological predictions are robust in the sense that even if I add an effective, this limit will be 0 0.095 If I add, if I even if I add a curvature and, a, and a, an equation of the state of the dark energy component different from minus one, I will lack the assumption of a cosmological constant. Okay, this limit will be 0 0.40, which is still super tight. So I mean, cosmological limits today are robust in, sen in the sense that they are difficult to avoid in simple extensions of the lambda CDM model. But let me put this even further. If I assume that dark energy is, 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 um, uh, is represented by a dark, by, but not by a cosmological constant, but with a fluid, by a fluid with an equation of a state larger than minus one, the limit will be even tighter, 0 0.08 EV, okay? So um, there are also limits without CMB, okay? These are limits without CMB data. 
and still they are good. I mean, 0.63 D without CND, without considering any measurement, not, not plan, nor act, not nothing. Okay. So you can see that it's amazing. So here we are today. Okay. These are the tightest limits. This is what we have covered in the sky so far. Uh, uh, EVOS, uh, the 2 df uh, uh, we can see DES. Okay. This is what we have covered. And we have reached here. Realize that there is still a lot of, of calls here that will be covered soon by future uh, by future mm -hmm. surveys. Okay, we are right here. Okay, the question is: we cannot we cannot uh, um, uh, rule out inverted hierarchy. To rule out inverted hierarchy, we need to distinguish this from this at the two sigma level, and we have not detected anything yet. You know, it could be that cosmology goes down, 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 and finds nothing. Okay. So we cannot exclude anything yet. We cannot exclude uh, inverted hierarchy, okay? And here I am. So, ja, na, 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 na. okay, uh, first paper, neutrino masses and, and, and mass hierarchy. Evidence for normal hierarchy. Neutrino masses and mass solvent, no conclusive evidence for normal <laughs> So this is a paper, oops, of, a, of friends of mine, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm a um, good friend of Licha, Raul, and I have papers with them, I work with them, right? And, and I'm a very good friend of Carlos, but we fight each other. Uh, in the, I mean, we were even members of the same research team, <laughs> you know, right? But we don't fight in each other, even if after we call each other like, oh, what's your team doing? Very well, let's continue to do it, okay, right? <laughs> so, okay, what's the, what's the point here? The major point is that, okay. Then you can you can explore the, the, the parameter space in different ways. Okay, you can either parameterize it with M1, M2, M3, or with uh, the lightest state and then the mass splitting. And the prior you can put in this in this uh, when you explore the, the, the neutrino parameter space can be linear or logarithmic. So we saw right that the, the the right way to do it is this one. Why? So we come back to well, I mean basically because the most effective parameterization or prior is the one which minimizes the fraction of initial parameter space in compatible pole with it. And this is, a, is not only for this case, it's for any single analysis you would like to do, okay? So, uh, I think that most of you all know what is Bayesian evidence, right? So the Bayesian evidence is the average of the likelihood and then a prior, you are causing a prior for a specific model, uh, a set of parameters theta and a data set D, okay? And then you can define the model posterior probability, and the bias factor is defined as the ratio, right, of these model posterior probabilities. Okay, so depending on the, on the values of the bias factor, you can say that there is inconclusive, weak, moderate, or a strong preference for a given model. Okay, very good. So, in 2018, we already showed that. that let me see now. You can see this here, right? That uh, when you when you consider only oscillation data, right? And these are the, all the possible ways of parameterizing the things. A means uh, M1, M2, M3, and either linear or logarithmic, okay? B was the, with the delta M squared. All of them, none of, sorry, none of them, none of them lead neither to, uh, to moderate nor to, nor to a strong, you see, you see here, they, they, they are along this line, right? And the, the it, it, it was just weak for the normal for the normal hierarchy, right? Here you can see the bias factor of the normal hierarchy versus the inverted one. It was always lying in this line around two point something, and it was always weak, except for the case in which you consider logarithmic prior. Okay, so here. So I mean, come on. And moreover, is the oscillation data. This is all the oscillation data. The one which is driving the evidence for normal ordering, not cosmology. Cosmology is not driving any, was not driving, and now, I mean, things have not changed much. But you can see here that there is a case here, oh my God, but this is weird, no? If you don't get strong evidence for any of the parameterizations and for linear. Uh, or either linear or logarithmic priors, except for one particular case, you don't claim that you have a strong, uh, 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 strong evidence for the hierarchy. I mean, this is unfair. Yes. I'm 
I, I can explain you later. I, I mean, I can explain you later. Yeah, it's very, it's very easy. I mean, it's just the exponential factor of, I mean, you just have to do, is the log, the log of the likelihood is just the, the I mean, is, there is a one-to-one -one correspondence. So I will tell you, okay, no problem. So, I mean, this is very unprior time, okay? <laughs> okay, this is very unprior time. Because if the prior affects the posterior, this means that you cannot rely on your data, okay? The data are not informative. I mean, the, 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 the evidence should come from data and not from the prior, okay? So you can see this here, right? And in this case, what happens is that here is the space M1, M2, and M3 in the, in the, linear, in the, in the, in the, in the linear case. And here is when I take logarithmic uh, prior. So you see that here in M1, M2, and M3 don't change basically from inverted to normal ordering in, in red and in black. And here, instead, in the case of M2, you will tell me they are very different, yeah, but I can switch these two and will be then identical, you know, I mean, the red here will be the black here. But in M2, instead, there is a huge difference in the logarithmic case, you see, for normal and inverted hierarchies in the, in the volume. So this is what is given them the, 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 strong, the, strong, the, strong, the strong evidence, okay? So the prior volume drives the strong the preference for normal ordering, okay? But this was in 2018, but we come back after the pandemic. This was previous the pandemic, after the pandemic, we need more. Okay, so again, uh, evidence for normal hierarchy. Uh, no conclusive evidence. Okay, so we, we tried this time, even we, we went farther. We tried five different parametrizations and priors. Okay, five, not two, five. And you see here, this is a very busy plot, but you can see here that in the case, which is that one, this is amazing because even without any data, you should be here. You see, I mean, the, the, the dots, let me explain you. Uh, this, sorry, the, the, the dots right here, and, and then you are cut, I mean, this is, these are oscillation, then you are scattering. They, and then you add uh, uh, a the neutrino, the neutrino mass from cosmology of 0.12 and then of 0.093. And these are the different parameterization. So I mean, realize that i mean even without adding data right or they have already i mean a, a bias, something like 1.71 one sigma you know what i mean so this is the case so i mean again the prior and the parameterization are driving the the, the evidence for 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 inverted for, for for normal hierarchy okay these are the two cases why one should quote this case, the most conservative one, okay, which is this one, by the way, okay, this one are the cases, so they reach even four sigma for normal hierarchy, while you do it in the, in the right way, right, you will get, sorry, you will get what I told you before, sorry, you will get what I told you before, that this here, okay, so these are the, the cases. They go to the strongest uh, uh, parameter, to the parameterization, which give the most, the, the, the strongest uh, bounds. I mean, that they give the strongest evidence for, 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 for normal hierarchy. But you should look, for instance, into this case, right? Which is the most conservative one and is the one one should look at, okay? And then you will see that the, 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 um, the evidence for normal hierarchy is just coming all from oscillations, okay? And it's 2.7 sigma, whatever it is, the number of when I add cosmology, when I add again, um, cosmology. So without cosmology, it's 2.1. If I add cosmology, it's 2.7. So cosmology is not driving, obviously, the preference for it. So it's very in prior time uh, to take uh, ordering agnostic priors, which a priori show no, not a pre show no preference for a given ordering, okay? So one should do it via uniform log distributions in this case, or via uniform distributions only if, we, if you adopt this parameterization, okay? Just to keep in mind that data should be, I mean, must be the one driving evidence for whatever you look for in the future, in your career, okay? So remember this. Okay, so future neutrino mass bounds. So we will have few clips that will cover more and we will have also, you see, this is what, what, what Euclid is gonna add in this sky, in this sky quickly. And we have DESI that is already collecting light and also LSST. And DESI and LSST, you will see that they will basically 
cover the full sky, okay? So, I mean, you, we will be able to, to fully explore all the galaxies in the northern and in the southern galaxy. And we will be, we will be able to reach this, these limits, okay? So, we will be able to test the minimum mass predicted by oscillations with a, with a precision of two or three sigma, okay? And also, if, if, the hierarchy, if, if that's the case, the hierarchy will be normal, and then we will test the hierarchy with two or three sigma per precision in the near future, okay? But the dream of every Newtonian of physicist is not that, is to know the individual values of, the, of each of the neutrino mass eigenstates, right? So assuming that we reach this sensitivity, because I told you that we will be some of the mu, if, if it's 0.06 eV, the error we will get will be, we will, we will be testing this number with two, 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 two three sigma precision. So the error we will get will be 0.02 eV. Here I showed you the three masses, light, medium, and high, one, two, and three, or three, one, and two, depending on the, on the, on the ordering, for the normal ordering and for the inverted ordering, okay? You see that with this error, Neither with uh, neither with with uh, Euclid and 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 Desi, we, sorry with Desi and Planck sorry we will be able to distinguish them. The overlap is impossible. Okay, let's go further. Let's go at uh, CMDS stage four and Euclid as well here. Okay, okay. So Core is uh, the same than uh, than 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 is a future uh, CMD. Uh, um, Experiment and it's the same than CMD stage four, okay? And LSST, no way, they still overlap, okay? They will reach a, a sensitivity of 0.01, okay? But no way. So, what do we need to reach this, okay? Only, only if we reach um, a, a, an error of 0.005 EV, we will be able to see, to distinguish, right, the individual neutrino mass, okay? You see how now they separate, okay? For M1, M light, M high, and, um, and you see now that we, we have not we still the overlap in some cases, but here we start to see something. But what can we do to reach that level? Okay. So here we are, 21 centimeter neutrinos. Okay. So at some point, there will be no more galaxies in the sky to observe. I mean, the surface will be will be mapping the, the, the northern and the southern hemisphere caps, and there won't be more galaxies. So we should go to a different tracer, okay? And what is the, the tracer we should look at? To the comp to the element which is the most abundant one in the universe, which is what? What is the element which is the most abundant in the universe? Cecilia Payne discovered this in, 20, in, in 1925. Hydrogen, very good. So we should look into hydrogen, okay? This is a beautiful picture from Matthias Haldarriag and Max Tegmar. And you can see that this is, well, I mean, we have gone now up to here with galaxies, but with galaxies, we can reach only up to here. All this part of the universe, we cannot see with galaxies because galaxies are not there. I mean, so, you know, the universe is, is, is didn't, didn't re re ionize again. So we should look into the 21 centimeter signature. So 21 centimeter cosmology will be able to map most of our observable universe, whereas the CMB, the CMB just dropped this tiny thing here, okay? So um, what is the 21 centimeter, because uh, uh, what is 21 centimeter cosmology? So 21 centimeter cosmology, what measures is the hyperfine transition of neutral hydrogen, that will be the pressure and can be measured even in, a, in emission or in absorption with respect to the CMB emission, okay? De depending on whether we are at a residue larger than 10 or, uh, sorry, smaller than 10 or larger than 10, okay? You can see here, this is time goes this way, right? So we are here, right? And you can see that the universe at some point is realized again, okay? So the emission begins here, the emission is here, and here is where the first galaxies start to form. And this is what 21 centimeter can, can see, okay? And this galaxy survey scan, okay? So uh, this is a square kilometer array. It, it, it will be the largest radio telescope in the world, okay? Which I mean is that the effective collecting area of all these antennas will be like to have a huge plate 
of one kilometer square. Imagine to have a one, one a radio telescope with a plate of one kilometer square. So here I show you some of uh, animation of how it will be built, okay? It, it will consist of uh, 2,000 high, uh, high and mid uh, frequency dishes and uh, a, low, a million of low frequency antennas. Okay, so can I show you some, this is very nice. There are some aborigines, right, in some areas, right? And uh, this is the, the Murchison region, right? And then there, there is the, 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 the lands out of the Guayari Yamaji people. And then, I mean, there is an agreement, right, to protect the culture, right, and the heritage of this. And also, of course, it leads to benefits to them, right? So, I mean, here you can see, why do we go there? Why don't we go there? Because we have to go to places with very, very small radio contamination, of course. I mean, if you put a, a radio detector in the middle of Manhattan, so good luck to it, you know? So these are the countries with less density population. We have Denmark. Uh, sorry, we have Greenland. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. Uh, yeah, so we have, we have Greenland, okay? We have the Falkland Islands. We have uh, uh, the, the uh, Pitcairn, uh, Pitcairn Islands, uh, UK, both Mongolia, Namibia, the French Guyana, and then Australia, Ireland, Suriname. So, I mean, this is why these this, this radio detectors are located here, okay? And this is where SKA is going to be uh, located. There are um, uh, many countries joining. We joined in 2018. Spain was a, uh, started to be well, I mean, out my group. I mean, Denmark, I don't know if you that it's also a uh, same institution that I don't know. Sure. Yeah. I will find out. So these are funny facts, okay? The data collected by SK in a single day would be, uh, would take nearly 2 million years to play back on a iPod. Would be so sensitive that we'll be able to detect an airport radar on a planet uh, of uh, 10 of light years away. We'll have the processing power of about 100 million to see. The disease of SK will produce 10 times the global internet traffic. And SK uses an optical fiber to drive up twice around the earth. Okay, so it's really a, a huge thing. I mean, it's really, really a major thing. Okay, so um, it's not going to do only cosmology, of course. We'll do, I mean, exoplanet. Uh, astrobiology, quasar physics, uh, black holes. I mean, it's a huge, huge uh, machine, right? Okay, so now, as I promised you, they have a constant question, uh, tension, okay? Uh, I told you that I was gonna tell you a bit. We already had some appetizer yesterday. So um, this is a very busy plot, okay? That we did in collaboration with, with, uh, with uh, Eleonora de Valentino and, but uh, are also, are, uh, there are also other, other reviews, of course. So um, I, do, I, do, so I saw you here, what I'm showing you here. This is the value of the, of the Hubble constant here, as measured by, 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 by Planck. And this is the value of the Hubble constant as measured by uh, uh, HUC. And you can see here a lot of, uh, a lot of, a lot of, of combinations of early probes, high receive probes, and low receive probes. So I mean, depending on the data sets, I told you it's like four or six sigma. Here we have CMB with plan, CMB without plan, no CMB, but uh, with DDN, PK, power spectrum plus CMB lensing, right? And these are in indirect probes. I'll explain you why. Because you have to assume an underlying cosmological model. These ones instead are uh, rely on local measurements of, of, of redshifts and distances in our local universe, okay? Calibrated with CEPE, with the tip of the red giant branch, uh, measured the Tulipiser relation, surface redness fluctuations, supernova type 2, uh, lensing, gravitational waves, okay? So these are late measurements, and all of them lie more or less here. The measurements from, from, still from gravitational waves are still quite, um, the, the error was at large, but okay, I mean, they will improve, of course, with more and more and more objects. So, and here we are in the, in the, other, in the other case, of course, the, the, the high resolution measurements from CMB. Okay? So, this is a plot from Wendy Freeman. So, here I show you as a function of the year, right? The measurements from CEPES, right? 
of the H0, the measurements from the CMB and the type of, and the type of the, the, the umbral, which is right in the middle. But as I told you yesterday, it has grown significance with the years. I mean, here was not such a big problem, right? You were different, but okay, it's still overlapping. But as data become more and more and more and more and more and more precise, they they separate more and more and more and more. So this there is something going on there, okay? So the values are 67.27 uh, 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 plus minus 0.6 in the case of plants and 73 plus minus one in the case of, of, of separates, okay? So what happens with early measurements of the Hubble constant? They are a prediction within the lambda CDM uh, framework, okay? And then they tend to increase from the Planck uh, temperature baseline with the inclusion of data. Here you can show, here you can see, right? The temperature data only here, and if I include polarization or I include other data sets, they move that way, okay? But they are an indirect measurement, okay? Okay? Why? Because they rely on a model. Later, they are the best established and unique empirical methods to measure, uh, to measure the, uh, the Hubble constant, okay? So the distance ladder is used to calibrate luminosities, stars, this is that after can be seen at a much larger distance, you are calibrating distances, okay, with, with this surface, okay? But there are other, um, other, 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 other possibilities. And here I show you all the possibilities that I have told you before, and these are direct measurements, okay? So some of them are gastrophysics dependent, model dependent. For instance, in strong lens systems, we, we, we should assume, one should assume something about the, the, the lens distribution. And this might vary the other side. And also the standard series, as I told you, I mean, they are, they are more affected by, by, by assumptions or by photographs, okay, let's say, or by, or, or by little um, data sets, as in the case of the standard series, okay? So, could be systematics. The problem is that one only systematic error does not fit the thing. You need many, many sources of systematics. For instance, there could be calibration issues in the supernovae, okay? As different populations between local and the Hubble flow in the supernovae, but this will be extremely weird. Or if we are living in a void, in an underdense void compared to the rest of the universe, but also weird. Uh, in the case of the, of the quasars, for, uh, so, sorry, of the strong lens systems, uh, we, we should, one should worry about lens profiles, okay? Maybe we are assuming something wrong about the lens profile, but still, as I told you, it's just not one thing. And, and many sources that, that will be required. Or, okay, one can say it, it, it is the cosmological principle wrong, but I mean, this is already even more, uh, even more uh, uh, weird, no? So let's come back here and let's see how is phi sigma, right? How CMB measures the Hubble parameter. Okay, this is what I was telling you tonight, uh, yesterday. Oops, sorry. This is what I was uh, telling you yesterday. So from measurements of the matter and material density, even a model, one derives RS, the sound horizon at the cutting. I just saw you the, the maximum distance of sound wave can travel since the beginning of the universe until the black hole, okay? And the position, and, and what we are measuring is the temperature in different points in the sky, that in, in the different points in the sky, that we, we project into spherical harmonics, give us the position of these peaks. So, from the position of the peaks, we can infer the angular diameter distance, given a model, okay? Because we have predicted this in a model and we have measured this. And of course, the A is in the same proportional to the Hubble constant, okay? <coughs> so, the question is could the last scattering surface be closer or could the CMB spots be smaller? Okay, so there are several ways of fix this. Uh, um, so we, we can change either RS or BA. If we change RS, we have the early universe solution. We change, we can change both RS and BA, but mostly RS and the combination to have a higher H0, okay? In the case of the late universe solutions, you cannot change RS because you are already in the late universe. So this is already fixed. I mean, this happens very, very early in the universe. And we can, and one can change the A addresses after the combination to have a lower value of H0. But all solutions are required to leave and change theta S, the, the, the angular size of the coupling and the diffusion damping length. So these are the, this, this is just like a, like a recipe book. If you want to pick the H0, so either you change RS 
all the way, but be careful, okay? Because don't, don't burn the cake, let's say, okay? <laughs> so, one can think about an effective, okay? For instance, okay, let's add an effective. Of course, if you increase an effective, you will have a, a large expansion rate of the universe and then a shorter uh, arrest. And the AR recombination needs to be smaller, so you will have a larger value of it. So you can see, if I increase the number of neutrino species or whatever stuff, relativistic stuff I want to add, I will have a larger uh, Hubble constant, which is here, right? But what happens is what we were telling you, we talking about the other day, that then I, I increase the value of C minus. So I fix one problem, but I, 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 I reduce a little bit, it's not that you fix it, but you reduce a little bit the tension on, C on, on H0 a bit only, but then you increase a lot the tension in the C my parameter, okay? Because as you can see here, in this, in this color coding, as I increase H0, also the C my value will increase, and then the measurements, here I saw the measurements from the ES that prefer obviously a lower value of H0 will be with the tension with those of plan which prefer a higher value of H0. Okay? So you see, no? So I mean, no way. Um, so uh, if I add an effective, this does not fix it. I mean, because here I saw you again that the, the, the Alan does it plus an effective does not move up to here, right? This is what we want, and that's not good, okay? There is a still a 3.4 sigma tension. What can I do? Go to even more exotic cases. I'm trying to fix this with neutrinos. You can do it also in other ways, okay? But what can I do? For instance, with three, three, three SPM neutrinos, right? Instead of having three SPM neutrinos, sorry, not with three SPM neutrinos, with non three SPM neutrinos, okay? I can assume that neutrinos interact. So what happens is that three spin neutrinos travel supersonically to the photon mayor field at every time. And they induce this phase shift in the CMB, okay? Interacting neutrinos, however, they change this phase shift, okay? And then they shift the power spectrum, the CME power spectrum towards smaller scales. And then what this, what, what I need to fix the effect of interacting neutrinos is just a smaller value of VA which implies a higher value of H0. Wow. What a, <laughs> you know what I mean, no? So I mean, it's just a recipe. I mean, to fix what, what they do in the, in the, in the, in the CMB, that they, they, they change the angular location of the pits, I need to increase H0, okay? Because they, they will shift the, 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 the CMB power spectrum in a way that I can... Uh, I can I can have a larger value of H0, okay? So, for instance, if, if I have this sort of interaction with a heavy mediator, okay, with a four effective, uh, with, which is effectively a four fermion interaction, but with an effective uh, coupling constant much larger than the Fermi, right? Neutrinos experience a scattering after the coupling. So this means that neutrinos after the coupling are still interacting, okay, via this, we are interactions, of course, these are non-standard interactions, okay? So I mean, so what happens is that neutrinos will, uh, will, will, will be uh, interacting and not free streaming for a longer period, okay? So then this will delay uh, the, 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 free, the neutrino free streaming time, and then will induce this effect that I tell you in the CMB that you can compensate with a larger Hubble constant. So uh, the authors of this paper, Racine and Olivier Doré and, and Craig found evidence here for, well, of course, there, is, there was the, 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 the model which didn't have this interaction, but they found evidence for a strong interacting mode. Here I show you the logarithm, uh, in, I mean, the, the, the 1D distribution of the logarithm, in, in the decimal logarithm of, of uh, the density logarithm of, of the effective, okay? You can see this, okay? But, what happens is that even if they found a, a evidence, right, for this interactive mode with temperature data, when, when I consider polarization data from Planck, E, and EV, the evidence is basically gone. You see the height of this curve, right? So I mean, no way, no way, right? For this, for this, uh, sorry, for this interactive stuff, okay? So here you can see, I mean, it's true that in the strongly interactive neutrino regime, you can have a much larger value of H0, right? You can see here, this is the lambda CDM model, right? 
and you can have a much like, larger value. But this depends on the data sets that you use, okay? <laughs> this is here, right? Because if I use, if I add PT, uh, and if I add the, the complete data set from Planck, H0 cannot be that large, okay? So, I mean, one needs to add the whole data set to, to, re to really ensure that you are uh, testing, uh, doing something reliable. So, um, one model that can fix the tension is uh, models in which we have a majoron, okay? Models with an one ED uh, uh, majoron scale, uh, majoron particles of interacting with neutrinos before the combination relax. And you can see here this, right? And if I add this majoron model, you can see that here in this dash, red lines, H0 moves to the right here, okay? And this is neutrinos interacting via a majoron particle and not a heavy mediator, okay? So in this case, things look better. And the tension is not a reduced, okay? So here you can see. And then another thing that works very well is sterility. No? When one adds a, 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 an interaction on sterile neutrinos via a, a, another uh, scalar, right? A very light scalar. In this case, the scalar is very light. It's a Peter or Maria Kiriakono et al. And they, they show here, right, that in the pseudo, in the, well, in this case, it will be a pseudo scalar, but okay, I mean, very similar. No? Sorry that really it's H0 six to larger values when considering this, this interaction. Moreover, when you add this, this pseudo-scalar, this will block the thermal population of the sterile neutrinos in the early universe, and you won't have problems with an effective, okay? Because you will have an effective potential there coupling to sterile neutrinos that will block the production of these guys, okay? So, you won't have such huge problems with an effective because they will they, they won't they won't be fully thermal, okay? At the cap. Okay. So these are the nice models, the self-interacting neutrinos, in which the tension is reduced down to one sigma. These are the excellent models. And then we have also promising models, neutrino matter interactions, interacting radiation, self-interacting neutrinos. But of course, these are models that try to reduce the tension down to one sigma, two sigma, or three sigma. Models, the ones I'm, 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 I have here, are models with neutrinos. Without neutrinos, you have dark energy in a standard parameter space, and dark energy, value on gravity, power of equation, you know, I mean, you were gravity, you were food, I uh, were eats, I don't know, I mean, back to the down forces, a uh, couple dark energy, well, uh, and these are not so good, but still a couple dark energy, you know, so, so very good. You can have even more questions. So, <laughs> so take home messages. So neutrino masses and abundances, yes, it's in masses and cosmological observable. There are no hints so far. No hints, no hints for neutrino masses or dark extra radiation from cosmology. Okay. Uh, how do we measure an effective? At the end, with helium abundances, okay? Remember that helium does not care, and lithium is better not to use it, so, and helium is unstable, so. And then, uh, at the same year, via the dumping tail, the high multiples, remember, right? Not the low, not the, the, the lower one, because we had the university there. Uh, an effective is 2.99 plus minus 0.3, a 95% confidence level. From plan to T plus density, perfectly consistent with DDN. Cosmology provides currently the tightest bound to neutrino masses. Neutrino masses at CMB, how do we measure it? We measure it via gravitational lensing because we have integrated the sexual effect, realize that we have also the regenerasis, that was the, the reduction of the whole speed. Uh, but the largest, largest effect comes from free scaling. Okay, from large scale structures. Because neutrinos remember the three similar scale yesterday, the one that I forgot the story of the Mata L, or the, you know, you remember, right? So they reduce, they are hot relics and they reduce the structure formation at a small scale. So um, uh, due to the three similar nature, and then the tightest limit today we have is 0.09 EV and 95% confidence level from this data combination, right? Planck. Temperature and polarization plus density plus uh, a barium acoustic oscillation plus supernovae data. 
but in a busy population so on, so on digital scale survey for data release screen, okay? If we use data release tool, which is the data set that plan uses is 0.28, okay? Not 0.09, okay? But I mean, the data have improved, they have way more uh, traces, so this is what we do. So the significance in favor of the normal already is 2.7 from the combinations of population and cosmological data. This is not conclusive evidence. 2.7 is not conclusive evidence. And moreover, keep this in mind. From oscillations, I have 2.12. Cosmology is telling us a 0.69. So cosmology is not giving us any, any, any uh, hints about the, 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 the hierarchy. Oscillation measurements leave the current uh, moderate preference for normal ordering, while the most stringent cosmological measurements only staying the significant hypothesis. However, this is this is now. I mean, maybe in the future this changes and data starts to, uh, to to really give evidence for for normal hierarchy. Okay, but so far cosmology just adds up. I mean, just this uh, uh, point six. So I mean, and uh, these are if you want to these things will be in my in my in my in my presentation. If you want to play with with some codes. To, to, to predict the matter power spectrum for different neutrino masses, okay? There are tools, okay? Public, uh, publicly available, okay? And uh, I thank you all. Thank you very much. Thank you for your attention. <laughs> they finally all arrived. <laughs> Thank you very much, Olga. Um, I, I have a, a quick question, actually. So this uh, 0.09 electron volt limit. Uh, so do I understand this correctly? I mean, you, you discussed the different priors for the normal ordering and virtual ordering. Does this mean this limit can also be relaxed if we change the prior? No, 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 no. This is a limit on some of you, but then it has nothing to do with the hierarchy. OK, I see. OK, OK, good. So this yeah, is, this is a yeah, robust. It's robust. It's yeah. robust. I mean, as I, as I try to, because I mean, it's true that there was long ago is true that changing a bit the, the cosmological model is true that you could change a lot but now you really need to assume very very weird stuff to, to really relax the bound a lot yeah. i mean of course if you go to non-standard neutrino physics you can relax the bound i mean mm -hmm. with, in the case for instance of long range interaction you, you you can relax more the bound than if you than if you just relax the lambda cdm model but in simple extensions of lambda cdm model this limit is quite robust. I mean, mm -hmm. you can go up to 0 0.14, even adding curvature, and, 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 but, mm -hmm. but 0 0.14 is a very, very robust limit. So, I mean, the question now is something that we are doing now in collaboration with Stefano Arias and, 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 and Thomas Beth is, I mean, maybe there is a preference. In the, I mean, it's not only the, the, the preference for one valve diffusion better, but maybe cosmology prefers M equals zero. Okay. With what significance? This is what we are now exploring because I mean, realize that it's not normal. I mean, maybe cosmology prefers MU equal C. And then what so the, do we do? the sum of MU. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then what yeah. do we do? I mean, yeah. we have a huge problem because I mean, we know from oscillation that it's not zero. Yeah. And I really believe in oscillation. Okay. So I mean, so yes. things to look up. Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? <clears throat> Yeah, I'm curious about um, my question is um, I, you haven't talked at all about uh, one piece of data that uh, um, is uh, what about um, an, an neutrino cosmic background? Uh, what's the state of the art of are, will we measure these uh, relic neutrinos? Yeah. And if we measure them, what uh, how it will um, affect all this uh, discussion? Yeah, yeah. Can I show one? Uh, I want to go to the. No. Yeah, you are talking about cosmology. Um, no, in general, I, I don't know, I don't know which current experiments are trying to measure but, I mean, these relic neutrinos. To measure it directly, right? Yeah. Because these are all indirect measurements. Yeah, yeah, uh, uh, direct uh, measurement of yeah, relic neutrinos. Experiment, okay. Um, let me see if I can. Ah, no, because maybe you, 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 you got, ah, no, easier, easier. No, 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 it, it wasn't for this. So, I mean, okay. 
So what 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 one can do, right, is to use um so realize that it's very very difficult to measure because we have a temperature between two of them are 40 degrees, okay? So I mean two of them are non-relativistic for sure. So I mean you need a, a process without energy threshold. And one way is to do anti-neutrino capture on beta beta nuclei, okay? And then you have the spotolemy proposal, right? In which you will have this well, I mean it's similar to, to the to the to the, to the uh, beta uh, signature. This we need the beta DKN, and you will have here like pink, right? Okay, but you need extremely good energy resolution. And also, this is the photonic proposal. You need um, I mean the detection is most likely to happen when you have an over density, okay? So and large masses. For tiny masses, really, really, really difficult, really difficult. I mean, you can see here, right, the, 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 the expected discovery from, from the salad at all, right? So, I mean, for uncrusted neutrinos and 100 grams of, of heating, the expected nanometer year is this, but I believe that this was in a, in, this assumes something about the mass. I don't remember now, I don't have it on top of my head, but I mean, in the regenerative minimal, you can see the, 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 the number of, 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 of the rate that you will have, right? I mean, for, but this is a still under development. It's, it's quite a tough thing. But if this happens, it will be great, absolutely. I mean, this will be amazing. And moreover, realize that in this case, the, fun, the, the, the nice thing is that for the Majorana case, the rate is twice the, 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 than the Dira case, because in this case, the neutrinos are non relativistic, so you can distinguish the, 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 the Majorana versus the Dira character. So there will be a difference in the, in the rate, but it's twice in the case of one in the case of the other. But uh, you can see here, right? In the case of Dira, for, for Rental Dira, in the case of Majorana, here the rate is Rental Dira. But, um, it's also the generate of course, it's a special value of, of whether you have or not uh, over densities in, 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 the, in, the, in, the, in the in the galaxy, okay? But it's a very very difficult measurement, but will be a major discovery, of course. I mean, uh, to discover the to, to really be able to catch this, right? Like, I have 56 here, you see, I mean, mm -hmm. so yeah, I mean it's but the, the problem is that they are so so low in energy that is extremely difficult. Another possibility that is completely crazy, and people here in ISC will tell me if I am sick or what, but I mean, if you have a super, super, super ultra, ultra high energy neutrino, and you observe this, uh, you produce the C, uh, uh, you produce the C boson in a resonance, right? It's neutrino spectroscopy, the are new bar and inflation, right? I mean, so, and, and the depletion of, you, you will observe some dips, some dips in the ultra high energy neutrino flag, Ultra ultra high because to produce the C resonance, you need you need yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you need this this neutrinos from uh, uh super uh, from the cane of, of red in C yeah 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 you really need really, really, very very high energy neutrinos, very very exotic scenarios. And in what years are they planning to take data or this, was I the, don't know the status now of, 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 of sorry, I mean uh, I don't know exactly. I mean, I'm not part of the collaboration. I can ask them, maybe. You know, I mean, I'm not sure about the, what the what the current status. I mean, is there? I mean, the, I guess that they, <coughs> at some point it will go. But I mean, I, I don't know the time scale. If that's a question. It seems you don't have a lot of faith in them. <laughs> you no, don't have a lot no, of faith. No, I do. I do. I do. No, 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 I do. I do. But it's a very difficult space. I mean, it's a very difficult thing. I mean, and uh, I mean, uh, but I don't know about the time scale. I know that the proposal is there and they are pushing for that. But I mean, and I think that they should push for that. I mean, it will be like to catch the relic neutrinos from supernova, for instance. I mean, that will, that's much easier, of course. Thank you. Recent uh, criticism on the the concept of the experiment that I mean, because it's, I think it's some some uh, lattice uh, effects that uh, oh. can spoil these spoil uh, resolution. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, but I'm also not familiar yeah. with this. this is, so, yeah, this is quite. Uh, mm. There was one question on uh, Zoom. Um, <laughs> one question on Zoom by uh, Matteo. Can Hi, you unmute Mateo. yourself? Hi. Yeah. Uh, Sorry, it was just as uh, a 
somewhat longer question than, than was worth my opinion. So um, regarding the evidence for inverted hierarchy, uh, I, I understand that the overall, let's say, evidence in favor of normal hierarchy is 2.7 sigma, but just from cosmology, you the two sigma upper lower bound is 0 0.09, which already exclude inverted hierarchy, at two, inverted hierarchy at two sigma, right? So in principle, cosmology already excludes inverted hierarchy at two sigma. No, 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 because to exclude inverted hierarchy, you need to distinguish, you need to really be able to distinguish normal versus inverted at this level. I mean, and you have not tested anything. I mean, it's not, I mean, but but isn't the same true also for no, the oscillations? Not, no, no, it's not. It's not because normal implies 0.06 and inverted implies 0.11, Matteo. Yeah. So then to, to distinguish between 0.06 and 0.11, you need to distinguish between these two things. I mean, it's not just go below. I see. Okay. Okay. See the point, right? Okay. And I really do this, 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 this analysis, right? This uh, radiation analysis, you realize that the way and it, it, that you get what, what you are expecting, right? I mean, so uh, you get the point, uh, whatever. I mean, uh, so, so if I, let's be, because, so in your analysis, you first included the oscillations data and then on top of it, you added cosmology. And so, exactly. and then cosmology is just this 0.7. But if you played the game, the other way around, you first have cosmology and then oscillations. Cosmology wouldn't have; no, it no, would no, still be no. subdominant. No, 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 no. The order of the of the, of the things does not alter the product. Okay, so I mean, no, 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 no. It, it, it doesn't matter. You can you are adding information. I mean, so but the sigma is not necessarily cumulative, right? Uh, it's you, you can have two. I mean, uh, okay, may, maybe I'm wrong. I, I just thought. You are, you are you are adding beta chi squares. I mean, it doesn't matter if you are first cosmology and after uh, oscillation, that the first oscillation after cosmology. Two plus three is the same as three plus two. So, I mean, anyway. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the, sum is, the sum is always the same, but the relative importance might no, change. No, no, I mean, the relative importance, is, I mean, then, then what you are not prioritizing one over the other. We are not giving more weight to cosmology and that way to, you know, I mean, you can see this clear, right? I mean, when you take only the oscillations, you are here in this in these dots, okay? Yes. You, okay. Here, if you add, uh, if you add, um, um, this is with cutting, right? Let's correct. If you add oscillation plus cutting, cutting of course does not add much, okay? You, you are basically there. Mm -hmm. If you add, if you add a limit on the neutrino mass of 0.12, you go up, fitted up, right? From two point, from two, you go up by 2.6, and if your limit. On, on the neutrino mass is tighter, is 0.09, go up to, up to 2.7 uh, sigma, but no more. I mean, this is what you get. Of course, if you take the, the, the agnostic trials and not trials that even before having any data, they give you already two sigma. I mean, if you if you are prior that before giving you, uh, before adding data, they are giving you already two sigma uh, significance, this is not really, um, I mean, an unbiased thing, right? I would say. So yeah, but what I was wondering is that if you had only, like, I, I'm honestly, it's not a critic, I'm honestly wondering if if you had cosmology first, maybe you would still have a two no, sigma or no? No, no, you don't have two sigma. If you had cosmology only, and we have a paper, uh, I mean, I don't have here the numbers, it's something like uh, very low. I mean, no, I don't think so. I mean, no, no, no. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, you don't need to look for the numbers. I. Uh, it's. It's. Yeah, it's yeah. okay. It's the answer I was looking for. I mean, I don't know the number now, but um, I mean, of course, here we are keeping also oscillation data. Do you have uh, internet? Uh, yeah. Uh, of course. Uh, I should. I should. Be... Uh, let me see. So. Um, you have to search idea. for something. Or... Yeah, I want to see the precise number that we have. Uh, Sorry, yeah, because we had a number and I don't know, I should have. Um... Okay. Okay, so let me see, Mateo, let me see the number what was because I know we should have it here in this. I don't, I don't have it in top of, on the top of my mind, but okay. Yeah, I mean, you see that the, 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 these, these are the, the, the 
And I don't know how to translate th these two sigmas. I should have the, yeah, here. Eight, 1.56. But this I see, is, I yeah, I mean, you see, but this, the, but this is in the case of the strongest indication. I mean, okay. that's really that. If you look to these numbers, to this paper, you see here, this is only cosmology, okay? This mm -hmm. table, right? So how the, the this, I mean, this is neither, the minus one, my, you see here the, 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 the rate, I mean, the, the scale of the, of the values uh, uh, stuff, right? How to interpret this. I mean, it's, it's, it's nothing. I mean, it's 88%, uh, right? The, the number we, we are quoted here, right? That, yeah, when we perform a model comparison and the one, I don't know, sorry, this is was, this is was compared, some new and some, and some, we are comparing here the, the, the one, so the, this was not for that. We are comparing both cases. So I mean, in the and when the, we, so I mean, it's it's not it's nothing conclusive at all. I mean, it, it does not reach neither one point five sigma. You know, I mean. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you very much. This was uh, these answer the questions. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah okay. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, the future might change. Eh? Maybe yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, tomorrow there is a discovery and uh, <laughs> there are future data, and then they tell me, oh, she was wrong. No. 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 Okay. No. okay. Okay, so I, su you. I suggest follow-up questions maybe for the coffee break. Yes. Uh, otherwise, it's take, it takes too long, uh, too much time. So let's thank uh, Olga again for her fantastic lectures. Thank you very much. Thanks, Matteo. This was really fantastic. Yeah, so very inspirational. Thank you very much. So we have a.